If you want it, better come, come get it, cause I'm right here yeah. waiting, and you ain't gonna take it from me. Yeah, Alright, this video is gonna cover reactive butterfly. So it's the same as my blocking butterfly for the most part from the waist down. How my waist reacts when I go down, how my legs explode into the ice to push my knees into the ice, my toes doing the C-cut to get my feet out from underneath me is all the same as the blocking butterfly. Nice, solid, low in the legs, feet move back, start a C-cut, come out and go down. A little faster this time. The difference is my glove position. One more time here. My gloves are out. If you watch them, watch my shoulders, watch my gloves. Reactive glove style is when the puck's inside the hash marks and I lean forward and crouch a bit. Because the puck's close, I can do this. And then I bring my gloves up. Now from the puck's point of view, it's very little angle that it can actually get by me from the top of the hash marks. If it's inside the hash marks, I can do this. If it's outside the hash marks, I cannot do this. You can see the effectiveness of this. Right? Locking. Take up a lot of net. Take up a lot more. Take up even more. If you watch Carey Price a bunch of times in the shootout, you also notice he really drops his gloves low and gets them forward. He's using the same thing once people are inside that hash mark. He knows their angle, so he really gets his gloves low and actually almost goes to a reactive glove position even while he's standing. Give him a good advantage in his shootouts. I'm only going to use reactive if that puck's inside my hash marks distance. Doesn't matter whether it's over here or over there, if it's that same 15, 20 feet to my net, only then can I use reactive gloves effectively. If you're beyond that, I give up space on my net. I can use it when tracking a shot from really far out. Say it's a blue line shot, but I want to be down so I can track it easier. But this isn't really reactive, or let's call this making a save. So reactive we quite often use in scramble plays or rebounds. So what happens is we tend to do blocking butterfly first, and there's a rebound. We recognize that, we want to go into reactive because it's within probably 15, 20 feet of us. Gloves are out, nice and big, solid, looking for the puck. Oh, it's there. Make a save, make a save, make a save. From the puck's point of view, no holes, right? From up there, the shooter's point of view, looks like I'm giving away a lot of top of the net. If I'm like this and the shooter's, and I'm trying to be big, from the puck's point of view, what do you see? Whole heck of a lot of holes down here, right? That's why your gloves are together, out and closed. They don't need to be way out here. Now it's gonna go off my pants, go in, go here. I want them together, very close. Stick can cover my five hole, you should go on the ice. Corner. Shoot it down low. Save. Down low. Save. Very little movement here, right? High glove. Low glove. Low blocker. High blocker. Closer I am to you, the more net I take away, but also the lower I can run my gloves and still make top, bottom. Top, bottom. If I start getting up here, I feel like I'm doing good. And you look at my thing and it's like, ooh, look at me, I'm doing it right. But from the puck's point of view, what do you see? A whole lot of holes, can't have it. If I'm gloves back here, I feel big. We'll switch to the puck's point of view here. You can see lots of holes and how my gloves are almost out of the frame of the net. Now, we have to decide inwards, outwards, all this stuff. Here, everything's just a quick rotation, it's outwards only. That's what we want, less things going on up here, so it all just flows, right? Think of your mind like a computer. If I'm running a whole bunch of applications, thinking out or in, and tracking, and looking at the puck and reading the play, I want to simplify the programs I run. So the more compact I am, the less I have to think about. Now it's not, am I going in or am I going out as I track the puck? I just know it's not going to hit me and I'm tracking, it's outwards. It's not going to hit me and I'm tracking, it's outwards. So what happens when we're going down, down, now everything's going to explode, out. Looks pretty pro right there, doesn't it? That's because that's what the pros are doing. They're not going down like this, 
trying to be big and then going oh, in, out. Looks bad, right? They're not going tight. You never see a goalie go down. Do this to make a save. You watch the pros, they go down and they're all outwards. Everything's out. We're looking at puck, and we bring our gloves forward. And we let our shoulders round a bit, our hips go back a little bit, and we end up with our weight onto our knees. Now we're out, our gloves are here. That's the reason we use this. To make a save. Bam! It goes out in front. Make another save. Push. Move. The keys to the reactive butterfly, as I've shown you. Low in the legs. Knees get driven into the ice by the thighs extending. Toes doing a little C cut and flicking out to get them out from underneath you. Helps if you're moving backwards, be moving in matching speeds. Nice and wide in your butterfly if you can't get a wide butterfly. Stretch, work at it. Maybe you picked up goaltending 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. You may not have as wide a butterfly based on flexibility issues. Keep working at it, have fun with it. We do this to have fun, we do this to compete. Okay, you want to increase your butterfly. A good way, Maria Mountain's 30 day butterfly challenge. Great way to increase your butterfly spread. We're using it when the puck is within the hash marks. It's the only time it's really effective. Or when we're tracking a shot from the blue line and we know it's high. But that's not really reactive. We're up way too high. Reactive's down here, close together. Out. So remember, hands come down, close together, out towards the puck. Gloves are out. Hips dead, right? Hands go down. Gloves are low. Hips are back, shoulders rounded. Stick, try and get on that five hole line. Let your hips go back a bit so our shoulders come forward so we can lean and balance forward. So the more compact I am, the less I have to think about. Now it's not, am I going in or am I going out as I track the puck? I just know it's not going to hit me and I'm tracking, it's outwards. It's not going to hit me and I'm tracking, it's outwards. That's the keys on how to do a proper reactive butterfly. Hope you enjoyed, hope you found this uh, video useful and Come back for more if you like. Rollerblades and alleyways. I was no Gretzky, but I tried to mimic how he plays. As soon as I got my first stick, that was it. I was in every day. That was all I ever did. I was hooked, but it wasn't just for two minutes. If I could find a street game, you're damn right I was in it. I need to get some grip.